G'day, I'm Ian Smith and I've just finished putting in the bulk of the interior trim in my 24 foot Ranger class carvel planked gap rigged sloop. Using Australian red cedar, Tuna chiliata, previously known as Tuna australis, which grows all up the east coast of Australia into New Guinea and Southeast Asia as far as India in different varieties. It's a rich, deep, reddy brown colour when finished, distantly related to mahogany, but lighter in weight and more durable. After retiring from a long career in traditional boat building, I had plenty of cedar lying around particularly after building my historical 18-footer replica Britannia over 20 years ago. The other ranges in the class are mostly fitted out in Queensland maple with Australian red cedar trim, so I followed this precedent. But I chose a different layout. They all vary, but I've got a large V-berth ahead of the mast and a more permanent galley arrangement. We can easily fit four people for socialising down below when we've already had seven below for beer o'clock a few months ago. Now a word about the number of timbers you should have down below. For the internal joinery I'm just using two timbers, Queensland maple and Australian red cedar, but I'm also using white beech on the cabin sole and on the steps of the engine box. It's a common temptation for new converts to wooden boat building to want to use too many different types of timbers in the interior of the boat and it's likely to become a bit overwhelming. I've already got a lot of different timbers visible in the structure of the boat. Hue and pine planking, spotted gum ribs and stringers and king beams, celery top pine shear clamp and deck beams, and tea tree knees. But they were all chosen for their specific structural properties and in most of the other ranges they're painted, but I couldn't bring myself to do that. I've painted the engine box and the partial bulkheads aft and the overhead will also be painted white and of course the upholstery will ease the overall woody look. But that's what, seven different timbers, so I'm verging on breaking my own rule. I'm not going to make this a woodworking lesson. Any competent woodworker can handle the interior trim. If you've started your own boat from scratch, by the time you get to this stage you'll have all the necessary skills. Years ago some shipwrights looked down on internal joinery. One story I heard was of a Danish shipwright in Sydney who sneered at someone doing internal joinery, said, ah, you're just a moulding carpenter. But really, there are skills involved. I've got just a few hints. Leave it as long as you can, as long as you can. Do the longer bits first and then move on to the shorter bits. Never guess a fit. Measure and mark and then cut conservatively, always working to known marks. Always keep your tools sharp and always dry fit the trim before final shaping and rounding. Before you remove the dry fit, mark clearly where you want your shaping to start and finish. Mitre cuts generally look best when fitting trim at right angles. I use a disc sander for getting close fit, but it helps to have it close to where you're working. Cedar is a pretty durable timber, but I still sealed the backs of the trim, as well as their landing areas. There are some areas where you can glue the trim in. I glued the fiddles onto this engine box, because I can easily remove it without having to remove the fiddles. But all of the other trim on this boat is fastened with screws and bedded with flexible Sikaflex around the screw holes so it can all be removed. Almost every boat will need some of the furniture removed for access to the hull for a future repair.
and owners get shitty if you have to destroy their lovely furniture just for a minor repair. In the future, you or somebody else will need to remove the plugs over the trim fastings if you wish to dismantle the furniture. So it's best to fit the plugs with the same varnish you intend to use rather than gluing them in. Some shallow plugs, however, may need epoxy to ensure they stay there. And 5-minute epoxy is very useful for plugs because you can fit them and trim and sand them in a short space of time. When trimming plugs, the traditional method is with a chisel, starting a bit off the surface to check that the grain doesn't take a dive, which may leave the plug below the surface. If you've epoxied them in, be careful that the glue dag doesn't tear out a bit of the surface when you knock the plug off. Lately, I've been using a flush cutting Japanese saw for most plugs. Most areas will need the plugs sanded by hand, but on slightly wider stock, you can use a power sander. But be careful you don't flatten the area too much and damage the evenness of your rounding over. Simple treatment of the trim is quickest and cheapest, but a little bit of extra effort and planning can make your trim look a whole lot classier. It's traditional for structural parts of the boat, like beams, stringers and so on, to have their edges chamfered. I did these edges with a 45 degree router bit, but stopped short of the ends and faded them out, usually with a spoke shave. Trim is mostly rounded. Fiddles on the edges of horizontal surfaces generally look best if tapered towards the top, and this always looks best if it swells out towards each end. Flat-sided trim, square trim with a slight round, will usually look chunky, and I found this when I first fitted my trim. So I changed it. Square surfaces like this bulkhead cap look way more classy if the flat top gets a slight camber. But even that fades out close to the rear bulkhead. I did the same on this main bulkhead edging. The same thing applies to exterior trim, like this fashion piece at the top of the transom. I shaped it to have continuous camber in section. Experiment with the shapes. I once worked on a boat that had bulkhead cappings that were sort of a bread loaf shape. But be careful you don't overdo it. I once worked on a boat where the main bulkhead was dominated by the sculpture of a mermaid. The tail was down the front of the mast. The hair was carved out across the main beam. It was fabulously carved, but it was just over the top. I've got to build some plate and cup racks over here and I'm going to put in an electrical panel over there, but then it'll be time to move on to laying the deck. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon on Smithy's Boat Shed.